So our engine clears the ground in the down position. To sail like this, you need ballast to keep the boat upright. With the boat in the water, a valve's opened, and the ballast tank fills with 1,150 pounds of water. The water ballast, nearly half the way to the boat, substitutes for the fixed lead or cast iron keels found in other sailboats. This is the water ballast valve. When you launch the boat, the valve is opened and the water tank fills. Gravity does the work. When you retrieve the boat, drain the tank to lighten it for trailering. Now we'll talk about raising the mast. First disconnect it from the bow pulpit and roll the mast base to the rear and slide the hinge pin in place. This is really easy to do. It can also be done on the trailer. As the mast goes up, the load gets lighter. The four stays then connected to the front of the boat. This is the line that keeps the top of the mast raising pole from falling to the rear as the mast goes up and down. This is the winch. It's a brake winch and you crank it both up and down. The loads are very light. The mast lowers neatly into its carrier. You can leave the carrier on while sailing. Or you can remove it. Here's a view of the transom and the mast carrier. The rudders are in the retracted position. Bridges are everywhere and the good sailing is often on the other side. Here's the solution. There are storage yards like this near many of the best launching ramps. They're a lot cheaper than in the water moorings. Here's the interior. On the left is the galley and the long sofa seat. There's a very large, nearly queen-size berth under the cockpit and a large V-berth toward the front. The dinette's on the right. The head is forward of the mirrored bulkhead. The large galley slides to the rear to make lots of seating room in the main cabin. The cushions are very thick and very comfortable. Here's the big rear berth, the galley, dinette head and forward berth. The galley's in the forward position. The deck's been removed so you can get a good view. Here the galley's in the rear position. The sink and stove are still usable but it covers up some of the rear berth. Even with the galley aft, the rear berth is still a good double. The dinette table is now down to form a big single berth. Here the galley's in the forward position. It's the height of a standard kitchen counter and there's full standing headroom. The galley's being moved from the front to the rear. It's easy and frees up a lot of space for a big group to sit around the table. The sofa seat also makes a big single berth. The boat will sleep six. This is too much of a crowd, but it is possible. On the galley top, there's room for an alcohol stove, which has a good cutting board that covers the burner when not in use. Here's another view of the interior. Check out the big mirror on the bulkhead.
This is looking aft. With a galley forward, there's good access to the rear berth on the port side. Here's another scan of the interior with the galley aft. Here's another view from the rear. The dinette seat back has been removed, so you have a better view. Under the rear dinette seat is a large ice chest. There's also a place on the rear berth area for a standard carry-on ice chest. This is the galley in the rear position. The sink and stove are still accessible. You can push it even further aft to get more room in the main cabin. Here's a good view of the dinette converted to a big single berth. It's seven and a half feet long. Here's another view of the galley. The dinette seat backs easily removed for access to the rear berth. The rear berth is a full 6 foot 6 inch by 5 foot 9 inch, nearly as large as an American queen size bed or a European king size. This is rare in any boat. There's full sitting headroom over a large area. This is the head, the fully enclosed head. Many other boats have a head tucked under a bunk. These are awful to use when others are on the boat. It's essential to have walls and a good solid door. Here's the electrical panel. It's easy to reach from the cockpit. The windows are large and placed so that you can see out while seated on the cabin seats. The forward view from the cabin can be quite rewarding. With most sailboats, you're stuck with small side windows and usually no forward window. There are a lot of convenient places to store stuff, big and small. Here we took out the cushions and hatch covers. There's a big storage compartment under each of the seats and berths. These are the V-berth hatches. This is the vent for the water tank. It allows the air to get out as the water comes in. There's a high dam around it to keep water out of the boat. The main inlet valves on the transom. The battery is located under the ladder. There's room for a second battery or for a pair of larger batteries. Warning labels containing the important news are inside the hull and on the steering pedestal. Here's the boat at anchor on a quiet night. It'll be hard to find a more cozy, comfortable interior on a small sailboat or powerboat. While we're scanning, I'll add a side note. Insurance. Many homeowners policies automatically cover boats under 26 feet with relatively low horsepower. This one generally qualifies. A big cost saving. The cockpit's big and self-bailing. The seats are over 6 feet long and very comfortable. Big enough for sleeping outside or for sunbathing. Here we have the anchor roller, the furler, and the forward mooring cleats. The anchor locker will hold a large anchor and lots of line and chain. The foredeck hatch gives lots of ventilation. This is all first-class hardware. This is the track and car for the small jib. And for the Genoa.
the lifelines and bow pulpit help keep you on the boat. This is the main sheet traveler. Under the cockpit seats, there are places for two 12 gallon fuel tanks. Wheel steering is a lot more natural than a tiller, and it takes up a lot less space in the cockpit. 